So in this session, what we're going to look at uh, now is we're going to look at the marketing mix. And when we look at the marketing mix, what we're normally considering is the four P's. Now, the four P's are the considerations that you need to have in, in your overall marketing offering. And when we look at the four P's, we start to look at uh, the various products, which are or various uh, processes, which is your product. We start to understand what the product is that you're offering. Okay, so um, if I'm a product, that might also be a service. Okay, often people get a little bit confused by that. We start to look also at our price, which is how much our goods or our services are going to cost. We start to also look at the place. And we also begin to look at the promotion. Okay, which basically starts to talk to our four P's of our marketing mix. So when we get into those in a little bit more detail, we start to think about, well, what is the, what is the place? And when we talk about place, we're talking about convenience. At that point, we start to consider, well, how do I actually get a hold of these goods or services? How do I, how do I locate your offering? How do I get a hold of it? How do I buy it? Uh, where does it come from? And that could be anything from your online through to your retail offering or any other sort of locality from which I can get that. When I start to talk about your price, that's when I'm starting to look at the cost. Okay, how much does it cost? You know, how much I'm going to be paying for that good or a service? Okay, so when I look at that, you know, you might see that reflected as, you know, what's my retail price? You know, what's my manufacturer's price, whatever it happens to be. Um, I also start to think about the promotional aspects. And at that point, I start to consider, well, how do I want to give people information about my product or service? So how am I going to inform them? about what I'm offering? How am I going to persuade them to purchase it? Okay. How am I going to communicate those ideas? And more to the point, from time to time, it might just be a reminder. Okay. So the purpose of my promotion is to inform people about what's going on, to let them know that I have a product or service out there. I need to persuade them to come and purchase or to do business with me. I need to occasionally remind people, and you would have received those in time, you know, you get those nice little emails out saying, you know, use our goods or services, you know, hey, you've uh, done business with us in the past, come back and do business again. And also, how do I communicate that? So what method do I need to use to communicate to my people? Are they a market that looks at Facebook all the time and I'm going to communicate that way? Is it emails? Is it uh, videos? Is it TV, radio, whatever that happens to be? And more to the point, what's the message? Okay. When I'm talking about my product or service, you know, what is the service exactly that I'm offering? You know, what's the benefit? You know, what is it exactly that I'm offering you? So if it is a product or a service, what's the benefit to you as a consumer? Why do I, why do I feel this has some value that you're going to pay me a price for? Okay, and also more to the point, exactly where am I going to be targeting that price? So we've looked at the place, we've looked at the place, we've thought about whether it's a store, we've thought about whether it's online. In other words, how am I gonna get it? When we look at the price, how much am I gonna pay for it? When we look at product, we say, well, what is it? And then lastly, you know, how are you gonna communicate that to me? So how are you gonna get it across to me? So that's the way those four work. Um, in the middle of that, you might also find there's that uh, extra little bit there about people. Okay, at the center of that is always your customer. So you always need to be thinking through that prism. Who is my customer? And we'll talk about that later. Okay, now I can extend that and turn this into the seven Ps. So getting to the heart of the last bit, we started to talk about how people sat at the center of the marketing mix. Okay, so we start to talk about the people. We also need to start thinking about the process. And lastly, we start talking about physical proof. Okay, so when we're talking about physical proof, or some people call it physical evidence, look, our people, the people that we deal with, we're talking about our customers or our other various stakeholders. In other words, who's doing business with us? What are we trying to... Uh, to, to say out there who are we trying to influence and, and what do we want, uh, what sort of people do we want to, uh, to get coming to our business or a service. 
So that's, you know, in, in a short word, we're probably talking about our customers, clients, etc. When we start talking about the process, we start looking at, well, well, how does this transaction take place? Okay, so is it, um, if I was in a physical location, would it actually be in a shop? How does the person go through the process of buying my goods and services? Uh, do they line up and deal with my customer service staff? Do they purchase it online? How does that transaction take place? Becomes a, a, a interesting question. Okay, and quite often that can be part of the buying experience, that people expect that when they turn up to your store, you could have had a great product, you could have had great promotions, you could have a fantastic price, you could have you know, everything working for you, but if people can't get the goods or services easily, then that's gonna create a problem for you. And a prime example of that is that um, I went to a large shopping area. When I went into that shopping area, we could all find the shoe sale, it was a fantastic shoe sale, everything was there, everything was available. Uh, picked up the shoes that wanted to purchase and went to the checkout and then couldn't actually get anyone to process the transaction. So everything else was good, but having to wait 30 minutes in a queue left me with a pretty bad taste and you know, I wouldn't exactly hasten back to that store again because they didn't have the processes right. I didn't have a way by which I could very quickly and easily get in and get my, uh, my shopping done and get out of there. Okay, the last one we start to look at there is your physical proof or your evidence. Okay, um, so what we're starting to talk about there is, you know, it is the environment to some degree, but it is also the branding. Um, if you ever get to the fantastic, um, the fantastic jewelers, which is Tiffany's, um, you'll find that they have these, these amazing green bags. And it's of a particular color that everyone knows exactly what you bought. It's a, it's a very validating experience off the back of your shopping. You walk down the street with that little green Tiffany's bag, everyone knows exactly what you bought. You know, it's a great shop, they have the, a great layout, they have great physical presence, um, there is that evidence, they have a, a good product that's packaged in a good way. And these things come together with your price, with your place, with your product, and with your promotion. And all of that forms seven Ps of a marketing mix. Now the last thing that I would say with the marketing mix is that um, a lot of people just look at this from a very customer centric point of view. You also need to think about it for your business because it starts to affect um, how you trade. Okay, So when you think about people, yeah you might be thinking about your customers when you're looking at that side, but in this case it might also relate to your staff. Who are your people that work for you? Okay, You might also look at well what sort of processes do you need to set up because that's going to have an effect on your budget and the way you, uh, you train your people here. You need to think about the physical proof because that's going to come down to part of um, the way you spend your money to, to market your business. You've also got to think about you know, what is your price point because your price has to make sure that it's factoring in all these other various different areas which are going to come back to your budget. So that's part of the, the price setting for your business. When you think about your product, you have to think about, well, where am I developing that? How's it being built, manufactured or put together? Because obviously that's going to come into here. With your place, it becomes a question from the other side of the business about, if I have a shop, where do I keep my warehouse? So do I keep everything on hand at the actual premises or do I take it somewhere else? So with my place, I always have to think about um, my logistical component, okay? So how am I gonna be able to get the goods or services to my people, all right? All these things tie together. There's no one part that's more important than the other parts. They're all very important. And if we add them all together, that actually creates our full marketing mix. Obviously, this side starts to deal very much with a retail environment, but it's all seven are really applicable to all areas of your business, and you have to consider them very carefully. Cool.